approximately the size of California, Sweden is located in northern Europe on the eastern half of the Scandinavian Peninsula. Its southern region is made up of flat, fertile, often treeless plains, which give away to areas with poor, rocky soil and large lakes. The center of Sweden is filled with forested mountains with a network of lakes and rivers. Separating them from the broad highland plateaus of the northernmost reaches of the country. The people of Sweden was called the Svir by Tectitus in 1980 AD and were relatively isolated until the Viking era when raiding and trading with the rest of the world became common. The first wave of Swedish settlers came to the New World in 1638 and founded a colony of New Sweden around the present-day Delaware River. But because of a takeover by the Dutch, that settlement dissipated and intermarried into the growing numbers of European settlers. Swedish immigration into Connecticut on a large scale did not begin until well into the second wave of Scandinavian arrivals in the late 1880s. As late at 1870, only 323 Swedes could be found in the state. They left their homeland because of a desire to improve their economic status, hunger for land. They had crop failures and low wages, drove many second sons and poor farmers overseas. Coming to Washington, the new arrivals worked as farmers as gardeners and caretakers for the country state of wealthy families like the Van Ingers, Mowbrays, Valiants, and Faulkners. Others were employed as skilled laborers like butchers, blacksmiths, carriage makers, and coachmen. A large number of immigrant women were employed as domestic, as Swedish schooling for girls, including cooking so they were well suited for such work. They labored as maid, laundresses, and cooks at local schools and inn, like the gunnery, Wickham Rice, and the Mayflower. Washington Swedish immigrants came mostly from the southern provinces of Sweden, such as Småland, Skåne, Östergötland. It wasn't uncommon for a married or single man to come over alone for a time. Couples, and less commonly, whole families, also came over to start their new lives. Some even made several trips back and forth between their new homes and the old country. When the Swedish immigrant made a journey to America, people was waiting for them on the docks of Castle Garden and later on Ellis Island. Swedes were popular hires among the immigrant population due to their experience in agriculture and their domestic skills. Many New Yorkers who owned farms or estates in Washington picked up Swedes more or less straight off the boat, hiring them as car takers, farmers, gardeners, or for any number of jobs on the many tobacco or dairy farms in the area. The economics stratification were also found outside of ethnic lines. There was a class system and according to a granddaughter of a Swedish immigrant, everyone knew their place with many of the upper class keeping to themselves on Washington Green and the working class staying in the depot which was known as Factory Hollow due to the influx of immigrant family who worked in the local mills and established a college industry there. Many Swedes lived on or nearby Coke Street, Churchill Road, Calhoun Street, and School Street, also known as Swede Street. In 1910, around 100 Swedish families lived in Washington and represented 22% of the population of the town. The church and faith was a very important part of the immigrants' life forming the nucleus around many social activities centered. 
the newly arrived Swedish immigrant first worshipped in private homes, then in the Calhoun Street schoolhouse, and later in the former Swedish hall on School Street. And before they built two churches across the street from each other at the foot of Green Hill Road, the Swedish church was formed in 1888 through the initiative of the Ladies' Aid Society, as well as John Carlson, William Hunning, Perry Anderson, and John Peterson, who called upon Reverend Fritz Eriksson of Lowell, Massachusetts, to become the first pastor. They built the church designed by architect Erik Rossiter along the banks of the Sheepog River in 1889, and it was known as the Swedish branch of the Washington Congressional Church. In 1892, it became the independent Evangelical Salem Church. It is now called the Salem Covenant Church, and it is still meeting after 125 years in a new building on Baldwin Hills. The other Swedish church, the Trinity Lutheran, was organized in 1892, but was disbanded and is not sold in 1968 due to a dwindling membership. Washington, Connecticut today is a rural town of about 3,500 residents, many of them descended of these immigrants from Sweden. The Swedes were Washington back at the turn of the 20th century, and their legacy lives on today.